Yes, we are back and uh, looking forward to wrapping up what's been a huge week of grand finals, the AFL, the NRL, but let's uh, jump into this, of course. Shelter Footy Cast, live from the Back Chat Studios, and a warm welcome to our Back Chat listeners as part of what's a huge weekend, as I say, of footy and so much to talk about. Uh, Skeeter and Hammer, Sandover medalist extraordinaire, joining you. Uh, socials at Shelter Footy Cast, Footy Cast at shelterbrewing.com.au. Of course, the YouTube Back Chat Shelter Footy Cast playlist. We're going to run through our Thirsty Camel Clanger of the Week. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at Thirsty Camel. And, of course, as we said, welcome to our Back Chat listeners for what uh, is going to be a fascinating time with uh, Skeeter and that Sandover medalist. Hello, Hammer. Skate, good to be here. What a weekend of football it was. My goodness. Still a little bit hungover, but feeling okay. No, I can be honest, bomb my brain just fractionally fried <laughs> yeah, after three days right. in Melbourne. I'm yeah. working at 80% capacity, yeah, that, which that's is good okay. enough. Um, let's go through the big moments of the weekend. And in essence, how do you, now, you're a lot younger than me, but how many grand finals have you seen that have been as good as what we witnessed? Uh, well, I, 18 was obviously 18 dramatic. Was, 18 was phenomenal. Um, 21 for me was exceptional, obviously. Yes. Um, <clears throat> and then, like the drawn grand final in 2010 was Yeah, I've got that down. Was excellent. 2012 was pretty good, Sydney Hawthorne. Yeah, that was really good. The Bulldogs won 2016 was good just for the story, not as yeah. good of a game. Um, and going back before you probably, yeah, it would have been I before just, you. I reckon I can, my, the first grand final I can remember was the Port Adelaide Brisbane grand final. So that wasn't as good. But, so a seven? Uh, no, Port Adelaide oh, Brisbane. Oh, four. that was a four, That was sorry. the first one that I can remember. Yes. Um, the second West Coast Sydney one was very, yeah. very good. They, they were tight, low scoring yeah. games. But I guess you have to go back to 1989 yeah. when you yeah, had the classic between Hawthorne and Geelong. But. Mm. It had everything. It was as good a game as I've seen in a long, long time. Skills were phenomenal from the outset. No one blew it. I think, what, was it t- two goals? Yeah. That start was the biggest lead of the game almost. It was 12 to zip at one point. I think that's as big a lead as there was all game. And it just was back and forth and back and forth. And all the big players stood up with the exception of a couple. But it was, um, for the most part, guns firing on all cylinders. And it ended up being a bit of a shootout. Everyone thought it was going to be pretty low scoring. But um, 90 to 86, bloody good game. Did you think that... <clears throat> Brisbane handled the occasion um, pretty well. I mean, given they conceded the first two goals, but Collingwood's always a side. It feels like that they give you a, give you chances and give you given they you know they, they've won three finals this this campaign by a total margin yeah. of twelve points. Yeah, I always thought it was going to be a tight game. I, I thought Collingwood might jump them early and then it, it get reeled back, but. They, um, I thought Brisbane handled themselves really well. I thought Lockie Neal was probably the only one that didn't really have his best performance, but <clears throat> Coleman stood up in the first half. Mm. It was phenomenal. The big, the, the guns down forward. I thought got Joe going. was good. Joe was good, and I thought they were good across the oval and um, and gave themselves a real look. Dunkley was Dunkley played well, so they gave themselves a chance. I, I don't, I don't, th- I don't think they buckled to the pressure at all but it has just been phenomenal how Collingwood keep coming up and winning these close games and it shits me to tears but they were um <laughs> they were the best team of the year and probably deserve to get over the line absolutely um now Bobby Hill what he did in the first half can you look I was there but I was watching from a vantage point that was in between people and I was standing having a drink having a shelter who played on him I, I honestly couldn't tell you who played on him. I, I couldn't tell you who played on him. He was everywhere. It almost was like no one was on him. Was Starcevich went to him for a little while? went to him for a little bit, but he was so quick and running around all over the place that he got so f- he got free on a number of occasions. He could have kicked seven on the day. Yeah. He missed two that he probably would have taken back and kicked another. Um, and then he had that late one to Pendlebury where he just wasn't even looking and then just laced him out, which was a, almost the best kick of the day. Yeah. But he was everywhere. To have four goals in a grand final and 18 touches of the footy, he was unanimously the North Smith medalist, which was uh, – I think he ended up being the unanimous North Smith medalist. Yeah, five, uh, five judges, yeah. and they all went uh, 15 Bobby votes yeah. to Bobby. Uh, yeah. Kitty Coleman uh, yep. was five, five. five. 18 disposals, four goals, no, nine score involvements to Bobby. Uh, so so yep. it was really no question – No, it was no question. – that he was the, the best on the ground. Well, certainly set up their, their buffer, but yep. – you know, they tried. They went down. They were down by thirteen points midway through that second quarter. Um, but at three quarter time, what, did you did you have a feeling that Brisbane were going to Collingwood, given their history, were going to be able to, to, to yeah. continue that? I, I was I was desperate for Brisbane to win, but I did go into the third. Like at three quarter time, I'm sitting there thinking, "There's just they're going to somehow Collingwood are going to win this. Find game. a way. They're going to find a way to win it. Even when Brisbane hit the front late, I said they're still going to find a way to win it. They're going to find a way to win it, and then. Side bottom goes bang to go. He goes bang, and they um yeah they they find a way to win it. Yeah, and look they they go to the last five minutes, 
as you say, they kick it like old then. I think Joey Danner, her scores yep. a goal with um, 90 seconds yeah, remaining, thereabouts. There, thereabouts, yep. Talk us through, I guess you might classify it as, as a clanger, but certainly a big moment of the weekend was the free kick to Lockie Neal. But the lack of uh, adv- advantage. Well, the advantage was paid, but the lack of awareness or uh, either Barry, I think it was Barry, was it? Yeah. Couldn't hear, and mm-hmm. that was the word, that he could not hear the whistle blowing. Yeah, there was 100,000 screaming as loud as they can. That would have been an awfully difficult one to hear, but it just, like, that's, I can't even remember the time of the game that was, but that's going well, inside. Well, that's, that's, that's the last, almost yeah. the last throw of the dice. Yeah, last, you're going inside 50, you're giving your tools a chance. Joe's been playing well. Hipwood hadn't done a whole lot, but would have been there, and Cameron would have been on the floor. So it would have been, for a spectator, you would have loved to have seen it get in the goal square, because that would that's where it would have gone. It would have gone top of the goal square, there would have been, 80, play, 80, yeah. 80 players <laughs> jump up every single, Every player on the planet would have been in there and there would have been, you know, someone might have bobbed up and kicked one and it would have at least been a, a bit tighter, but it would have been, yeah, uh, you can't blame him for it. He had, you know, that 50-metre penalty as well, which was um, which was an awfully big price to pay, which side bottom made it, uh, made it really stick. But it was... Oh, I would have loved to have seen it go inside 50, definitely. Yeah, but that being said, like, uh, Colin... You can't blame him. You, Hundred thousand, can't hear. And, and given Collingwood's defence now, just mm. quickly going, big story early in the game. Murphy subbed out yep. with a concussion, which apparently passed a test, but ruled himself out, which seems yep. a little he's unusual. Had, he's had a few growing up. He, um, I played cricket with him and footy against him as a junior, and he's had an awfully. He's had a few concussions going through so, uh, through his career. So I thought, yeah, I didn't know that he had um, ruled himself out, but yeah, he. You know, he's still a premiership medalist at the end of the day, so I'm sure he's happy with it. Absolutely. Uh, so he goes off the ground. I thought that was Brisbane's real chance defensively because it yep. meant Moore had to obviously potentially change his uh, the way he went about things. But um, So they lose him. The name that gets thrown up is the one, you go, Cameron Mooney had one possession in a grand final. Yep. Now they're throwing you know Billy Frampton under the bus. <laughs> he doesn't uh, care. He doesn't give a rat's. But he, <laughs> he had some chances. I know his yep. role was to nullify Harris Andrews. But he didn't take those chances, unfortunately, for him. No, he didn't. Um, he gets brought in to do a job and doesn't do it. But at the end of the day, I mean, you still walk off with a premiership. So he he, he won't be too worried. Um, yeah, he'll be a, the butt of a few jokes around the next couple of weeks with the boys, and that'll be fine. But, um, yeah, he, he had a couple of chances that didn't take. Harris Andrews was pretty good on the mm. day, and he's an All-Australian defender. He's um, one of the best fullbacks in the comp, so you can't – you know, you can't knock uh, Billy for not getting that job done. But, um, yeah, two touches is two touches, but you still have a premiership medal around your neck. So, well done, Billy. Yeah, got us covered. The boy from South Fremantle originally, uh, from one guy that uh, didn't get much of it to one who did, Nick Dacos, uh, 29 disposals, <laughs> the first goal of the game. It's funny when you're standing in the outer and you do hit, there's a lot of, um, obviously the Collingwood fans love him, but there's a lot of footy fans that uh, think that he's uh, protected species. Now that's that's yeah. just that's just punters being, you know, <clears throat> yeah. being a bit jealous of, of what he does, but um, he, he stood up with, you know, a, another great performance. He oh, The protected species thing is because he's very good at, you know, manipulating his body to get those high free kicks and that's the first one of a grand final, so that's going to stand out. Yeah. So that's, um, was it I, a free, did you think it was a free yeah, kick? Yeah, definitely. Got yep. him high. And okay. he, you know, I don't mind the way he moved his body into it and it's, you know, it's a free kick, so unlucky and he goes back and kicks it. But for a bloke to play his second game back as a 20, what is he, 20-year-old player, second game in eight weeks, to go out and have 29 on a goal on grand final day is a pretty remarkable effort. He was... He was very, very good. In tight, he was clean, He was his hands were sharp, and he just didn't look overawed by the situation at all. Everything that had been going on for him this week and the Brownlow medal and uh, his knee and his the whole family thing and mm. everything that the Dacos was representing on the day, he stood up and um, and he really took made the most of it and, and showed why if he had applied the you know, the back six weeks of the year he, he went to Brownlow. the Brownlow medalist. So he's the best player in the comp at the moment and um yeah, he stood up and played bloody well. He's old man mentioned in the rooms afterwards that he probably shouldn't even have been playing given mm. the, the severity of the injury but um and he, he watched obviously sat in the rooms uh, pre-game and, and watched some of the i think it might have been Cyril, uh, some of his great moments as well some of the, the collingwood boys got in there and just watched some vision two hours before um kitty coleman uh brisbane 26 disposals um six tackles that left foot look he didn't hit all his targets no no he looked to break the lines though which is what they needed um yeah, I mean, for a bloke that he's come out and just went bang last week, everyone thought, oh, surely Collingwood would have put a bit of work into him and he had 18 in the first half or something. Mm. So he, he got going early, which gave them a sniff. Um, 
he was dangerous. Yeah, he didn't miss all his targets, but the way he the way he moves the football and the way he breaks lines is damaging for any any defence. So he goes and really got the ball going forward. Gave him a couple of really good looks, and um, I think with the exception of Dacos, he went in as the leading possession getter at halftime and was uh, was nullified a little bit in the second half. But um, no, he was another one that was bloody good and and lived up to the the expectation that was going into him on the day. Absolutely, and and so there was expectations on on guys like like him, Joey Danaher, who. Let's be honest, we thought he could either tear it up or, or yep. stink it up. Um, and Charlie Cameron to kick 1-3 the week before. It took a while to get into the game, but I think both those players probably get a tick. Yeah, I think so. Um, I thought Joe was really good. I mean, he probably, we did, thought he would tear it up or stink it up, and he probably sat just in the middle a little bit more towards the better. Um, but he was he was really good on the day, mm. and I thought Charlie took a little bit to get going, you're right. And um, But then in that second half, he looked as damaging, as he looked as dangerous as anyone on the ground. I think probably looked up the other end and thought Bobby Hill was doing it better than him, so he uh, he turned it on a little bit. But, yeah, he th- both of those guys were um, were the two cogs that got going for their forwards. Eric Hippert was a little bit off, a little bit down, but you can't all have you can't have everyone singing on all, at all the time. But the two of those guys, um, yeah, oh, I thought they would probably got a tick after the game. Absolutely. As with Tom Mitchell... Uh, game high 13 tackles 24 disposals not like bad for a bloke that I mean it's a Brownlow medalist but um, <coughs> doesn't get across the ground so quickly it was 27 28 degrees but you talk of pickups and and it's worked perfectly for Collingwood what he's brought to the table yeah absolutely he's uh he, he has come into a team and hasn't needed to be the guy that goes and gets 40 possessions every week so I think he's changed his body shape a little bit and his body uh, and his, his style of football he's getting a lot of contested possessions and he's a real in and under and hard nut at the contest which is probably what they need at the moment so you can release guys like Dacos you can give Pendlebury the time and space that he needs and it's um yeah he, he's been a massive pickup for them and has really I mean, obviously win yourself a premiership medal but he was excellent on the day I thought and you look at the end of it oh I looked at the stats afterwards and said, oh, he's had 13 tackles and 24 touches because you don't really see him because he's all does his work in such a tight area. And um, no, I thought he was excellent on the day as well. Absolutely. Before we go and recap what our selections were for the weekend, um, after every grand final, I remember Scully was very buoyant sitting in this chair in March saying that Geelong are going to go back to back and, yep. and do it all again. <laughs> we know how hard that is. Oh, yeah. Does so- Collingwood have the – the makeup and the players and the style of footy to to do that. I mean, it's you know you're winning by by yeah. margins that are so small. Do you see them as a the old dynasty type setup for the for, for in the AFL? Or is it just too hard to, to do that in the modern? I footy? think it's very hard to do that. I said last year at the start of this year, I said Collingwood would be the team that uh, that fell off the perch because I didn't ex- I didn't think they'd be able to win all these close ones again, and they've gone out and done it. Um, as to whether or not it's they, they sort of go back to back and build a diet, it's just so it is so mm. hard. You've got so many good teams that have underperformed. The Bulldogs underperformed this year. Melbourne underperformed this year. Geelong underperformed this year. You've got team Sydney probably underperformed for their you know finishing in a grand final last year. So there's a lot of teams that have got star-studded lineups that are just ready to attack and run at it. And I think for a team that's that's built itself on winning these close games, they've given themselves every chance to sort of create something. But um, Oh, it's to say they're going to go back to back or they're going to build something is too hard because it's just so. That was just Siri having a chat to me. I'm not Siri sure. doesn't like it. Siri well, and I no, both think Collingwood aren't going to go back to back. No, no. But what I, what I will say is, and I don't know how to shut that up. By the way, Jade, I have to work that out at some stage. He's in Scully be pissing himself <laughs> right now. Um, uh, Collingwood aren't going to lose too many. No, I'm not going to lose. Uh, uh, Scotty Penrobri and still side bottom. Twenty ten yep. and twenty twenty three. Scotty's last quarter enormous. We mentioned Sidebottom's goal. I don't see, just off the top of my head, maybe I'm wrong, is there any reti- is, is anyone going to bow out? I don't think anyone's going to bow out. Pendlebury and Sidebottom have both signed on for another yeah. year. So I don't think they get any worse, which is you know tough to say to the premiership team. So, yeah, they, um, they were going to be hard to beat next year. They were hard to beat this year, and I didn't think they would be, and they were. So I'm not going to say anything negative about mm. them anymore, although I wish the Lions won. <laughs> well, speaking of the Lions, uh, before we... Um, wrap up this segment what do they need to do next year obviously kick one more goal in the grand final but they i think what we've seen for in the final um grand final we saw them against even though they got beaten by melbourne during the year yeah i think what they need to do i think is get some more access to the bloody mcg yeah, as most interstate so. clubs need <clears throat> yeah I, th- I agree i think you've sort of knocked the knocked the can they play at the g thing this year they've dominated games at the Gabba obviously and that's going to be their fortress for as long as they want to be good but their access to the G is, is paramount to them being a successful team in September and I think you've come there and they've probably wiped away the hoodoo because they've come pretty close to winning a grand final yep. so they just got to get more games at the G and 
I think they're going to be you – know, they're another team that's not going to get any worse next year. They've got a couple of retirees, but they didn't really have too much impact on this year. And they're going to have – you know they're going to have draft picks. They're going to have players that are coming up, and they're going to only, they're going to have players that only get better. So I mean, Ashcroft returns. I'm not sure yeah, when, but obviously he'll come back midway through the talent. year. So and you know, Coleman gets better, and uh, Danaher and Hipwood and, and Cameron have another year of playing together. So they're all going to get better, um, and they're still going to win all the you know they might not win all their games at the Gabba, but they're going to win enough mm. in the Gabba to probably push for top four. So that's that's their thing. I think they've just got to have another crack at it. I don't think anyone now can say that they're a team that chokes in finals because yes, they lost, but they. Through that really had a real throw at the stumps, and um, you know I think they'll be back and just as good next year. Yep, uh, well done to uh, Chris Fagan and the Lions, but also uh, congratulations to Craig McRae, whose wife gave birth on the morning of the match. And I don't know if she went to the ground at all. Surely not. You I'm can't not be- sure, but she know, you know they named their daughter Maggie. Yes, I did hear named that. Their daughter Maggie, which was pretty cool. The other thing that I heard about Craig McRae is that he told the Collingwood list that in I think it might have been one of the one of the three grand finals that he won yep. that they had this thing Brisbane where they would always touch the cup last. So wherever, whenever it was a joint thing that both would hold the with cup. two captains, two captains mm-hmm. had to hold the cup. Darcy Moore always grabbed it last, and then when Matthews and um, Peter Moore walked out, <laughs> he grabbed it last too. And you see them wetting themselves as they're lining up before the grand fi- uh, before the um, national anthem. So they uh, they got a little bit of that. It was a little mental game for uh, for the for the boys, I think. But uh, nice little tidbit there from Craig. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's been a ripper, hasn't he? In the crowds yesterday yep. um, at their <clears> home base and. Gee whiz, they, they some, I'll be honest with you, they are very passionate, but there's some uh, absolute ferals who barrack for Colin, but I can tell you oh, first yeah, yeah, no hand, firsthand, they are off chops. And when the yeah. siren went and I was down in the second lower tier and, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was an explosion of emotion. Um, sure, would have been. Uh, well done to Collingwood. Uh, that is uh, our big moments of the round. This is Skeet and the Sandover medalist. Uh, let's jump into our thirsty camel clanger of the week. Uh, have you found one from the grand final hammer or are you sort of having to having yeah. to go to I, another area? I've, I mean, this is probably – I mean, I've had a go at the AFL a few times here, so I'm going to do You've got to be very careful. I do have to be very careful. I think my clanger of the week is whoever's decision it was to make Brisbane rock up the next day. And the, the Brisbane players had to go and thank the uh, – the, oh, the Fitzroy fans. The Fitzroy fans. Imagine that. You've lost a grand final by four points and you've had to front up the next day. I would have been like, oh – I think the players would have been absolutely devastated with the fact they had to do that. Fly home and do it to the Brisbane fans, sure, but far out, 24 hours, 12 hours after the fact, that hurts. Well, they were, the, so they were in the, at the airport yesterday when we were flying back, and uh, look, they were, they were fine. Chris Fagan looked, um, you know, they, they were all pretty. I mean, you can't do much 24 hours after the event. No, you can't do. But uh, that's, I mean, it's probably not a claim because you do need to thank them. I think for me, on grand final day, there wasn't a whole lot that went wrong. The no. Big, the only one for me would be the Jared Berry. 50 metre that's, free. That's 50 where I was heading. Uh, but, and I, I looked at social media and I th- would have thought that the umpires had, had absolute howlers. I, you watch on a TV, yeah. bit, bit better viewing than I had. I didn't notice that much that was wrong. But can no. you tell me? Tell I, me I, I, I completely agree. I thought the umpires did an excellent job. And I think for me, as, an, as a spectator watching, obviously at the ground, you can get caught up in the whole rigmarole oh. of everyone yelling ball and everyone yelling at the umps, and especially with Collingwood fans. But the um, when you're watching it at home, for mine, the, the the hallmark of a good umpiring performance is when you just don't notice them at all. And I didn't. I had no no notice of the umpires, with the exception of Matt Stevick, who used to be a math teacher for my cousin at Melbourne Grammar. Oh, so really? Uh, every- but that's and, and we've got to give him a, a, a shout yeah, out. Yeah, he was, is that eleven grand font? Eleven in a row, I think. Eleven in a row. Eleven in a row. Yep. That's enormous. Yeah, Matty Stevick, uh, he a very 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 good umpire, good operator. Um, but yeah, I didn't think that. I thought they were fan. I thought they were fine. Didn't see, notice them at all. Um, but yeah, the big clanger for me was the Jared Berry fifty that resulted in side bottom nailing that one from fifty five. The clanger from Berry, they're not the umpire. No, the clanger what, from Berry. That he didn't need to do it. There was a clanger from the umpires, which I, I thought possibly was uh, it was caught holding the ball. It might have even been Berry, but he was taken over the shoulder. Maynard won the free kick. Was caught holding the ball. Um, but you're yeah, right. I think we're going to go Thirsty Camel Clan of the Week to, to the umpires for the, the advantage, which wasn't really an advantage. Yep. But we're not giving them a full-blown whack because nah, I thought I reckon they were okay. Yeah, I don't think you can. I mean, yes, that's going to be scrutinised a little bit, but that's in the heat of the moment as well, just as much as it is for the bloke taking advantage. So it's yeah. pretty stiff on their part. I agree. Don't run out of your favourites. Grab your shelters at Thirsty Camel. Great to have them on board in 2023. While we're mentioning grand finals, now you may not be as much into the NRL, but oh, I was. Yep, I was having a few shelters last night yeah. watching it. Well, I just got home from the airport to watch the last ten minutes, but it was eight <laughs> six. <laughs> what a game! Penrith yep. at half time. Brisbane score the next three tries. Or three two, tries. Yeah. yeah, so they're twenty four to to eight. 
twenty four to eight. We had yeah. fifty six minutes. A bloke called Nathan, Nathan Cleary. Nathan Cleary just goes bang, and just, just slices went, them up. Bang. Yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, did he? When did he win the Dal? He won the. Um, Wasn't Dalian this year? That went no, to that uh, was Caelan Ponga. Ponga. He won it last year or the year before. Oh, he would have won. He's a Dalian. He's twenty five years yeah. of age. He's won three premierships. Yeah, he probably hasn't stood up in state of origin as much as you think he would. He but last was night, excellent last night. Last he? night, I mean, again, I, I didn't get to catch it, hardly any of the game. But did Brisbane choke? Yeah, I think they they had a couple of chances to lock it in their front half, and they stepped some had some tackle stepped, and they broke some lines. And there was look, they played Penrith played well in the last ten minutes. I'm not a massive rugby fan; I don't really tune into it unless there's a big game on. Rugby State of League, call rugby watch. league, by the way. Rugby, they call it rugby league. In our real, yeah, I don't call it rugby. Rugby's the See, other that's game. how much of a fan I am. <laughs> it's Royal Cups on the yeah, other side there of the you world. Go. I don't tune into any form of rugby that is, unless Aussies are playing. But unless it's State of Origin or uh, NRL Grand Final, I don't really pay much attention. And um, but yeah, I could sit back and appreciate what was going on. It was a bloody good brand of uh, of NRL. Did you appreciate the pregame entertainment compare? Kiss, because I, oh, I saw Kiss. I'm a bit of a Kiss excellent. fan. I love Kiss. I just thought they were super. Oh, kiss, and we're all awesome. just burning. I was just, you know, I wish they'd played one more song. They were excellent. They got going there late. Yeah, so, they you, were so you actually different I, generation. I loved them. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, oh, yeah, good. I, I would I'd love like to it. have been there because I said to this guy, mate, they'll be they'll be terrific. And he was sort of, ah, I'm an R and and I said, mate, Crowded House, as good as they are, this is a, a band that gives the energy to the crowd. Yeah, they certainly got me up at about more than uh, Hunters and Collectors at half time. But um, oh, it wasn't actually Hunters and Collectors, wasn't it? it was their half lead, to- uh, it was their lead singer, Mark Seymour? And, yeah, and and Co. But uh, Kiss were phenomenal. And I didn't see the Tina Turner uh, in. Personated. Did you watch any of that? Her last one. So she was a lead into the NRL grand final. Anyway, they reckon she was good. Um, anyway, I was just going to Peter Ford. He, he gave them a pump up. So he's in entertainment. We're just numpty forty yeah, people. I was so a big kiss. I was happy with kiss. Kiss was good, mate. Was I, oh, mate, I would like Shandy. But that maybe was a bit yeah. too uh, <laughs> late at night stuff. Um, once again, uh, it's Skeet, and uh, we've got the sound of a medalist. Okay, let's uh, now. I'm reading this off a rundown. Am I 100% right here? West Coast in the AFLW have beaten Port Adelaide. Yes, we have, mate. Thank you very much. <laughs> cheer, cheer, cheer. It was an almighty effort. Emma Swanson, our captain's 50th game. Um, it's a uh, We haven't had a very good history of 50 games. We've had That's our third 50-gamer for um, AFLW in, at West Coast. We had Belinda Smith last year in the last round of the year against Melbourne. I think we lost that one 77-1. to one. Uh, We had Dana Hooker in round two against the Gold Coast, and we lost that one about 99 to maybe 23. Yep. So haven't had a good run of 50 games and, um, and needed to buck the trend for our captain this week, and we did. Thought it was an excellent game of football. Uh, we used the ball really well. We were accurate in front of goals, which is not typically our strong suit, and um, you know managed to get over the line with, uh, with by six points. So a very, very much-needed win. And what does that do for the club that's been, let's be honest, from a women's perspective, you've been kicked from pillar to post? Yeah, it uh, it certainly it gives us a nice boost going into the halfway point of the year. It's The girls have got an eight-day, had an eight-day break, so I'm sure they would have gone out and had a couple of shelters and enjoyed themselves. But it's, um, yeah, it just lifts the spirits a bit, I think. We've been trying to implement a game style and a, a brand of football that, that works, and we just haven't been able to execute it. Um, and this was the first time we actually have. So it's good to see that the stuff that, that Mick and um, the coaches, are, we're all trying to implement and get them to understand, and this will be a good one to review because we'll be able to show them when when, when we get stuff right. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a good brand of footy. By the way, Emma Swanson's podcast is out this week on Back Chat. Apparently, it's a really good chat uh, as they break down her career, what she's done for the footy club and what's ahead for the West Coast Eagles. So that's uh, back chat. Emma Swanson, make sure you be part of that. Uh, before we uh, go to some listener questions, the Wildcats played on Friday, they beat Tasmania, yep. played yesterday, got uh, <clears throat> touched up by South East Melbourne, who, who scored, I think, 38 points in the third quarter, outscoring the Wildcats by 26, mm. which is some sort of record. But... Um, Cats one and one, early days. Early days. I, I see, I'm trying to get into the NBL a bit more this year. Never really have been a yeah. massive fan, but I'm trying to get into it a little bit. So I'm jumping on the Cats bandwagon, obviously, being uh, being a Perth man. But it's uh, it's early doors. I'm excited to see what's happening, but I'm trying to get on board as much as well, I can. Just give a cut to you, cool. I'm sure he'll look after you with a couple mm. of corporates at the uh, ROC <laughs> Arena. By the way, the Cats take on the 36ers on Friday at RAC Arena. Skeet and the Sandover medalist. Uh, listen to questions next. Okay, this is Guy4167. Uh, finally, Skeet took our advice on dressing more casual. I don't know what that means, but uh, <laughs> you and I 
We're both wearing shoes, Hammer, so that's, that's a start. That's a start, yep. That's a start. Um, not sure we can go with that guy, but thanks for the compliment. You are, you're looking good. Well, I've got to go to work. I've got to go to the footy commission. Yeah, exactly. I've been radio already. Correct. You're that, a busy man. Go home, and you know when you've been in Melbourne for three days on yep. the gas? Yep. You completely cook when you get... Yeah, correct. <laughs> and you try and tell the missus, nah, nah never better. Yeah. Never better. I'm fresh, feeling good. Fresh <laughs> day. Uh, this is Josh Gilby, court skater, having a punt at Crown Casino in Melbourne. Yes, well, he did. No, well, he, he, I wasn't having a punt. I had a mate who was... Who was, uh, I'll say, he's quite a, a wealthy individual. He was like punting for Australia. Nice. I was, How'd I was, he go? Uh, I don't know. I think he won 18 grand on one night and lost 15. Who knows? He was Jeepers. he was winning and losing. Anyway, um, I wasn't way. punting on the tables, but I was having a look and maybe went into a little bar, listened to a bit of music. It was just a, just a good night. normal Melbourne good vibe, yeah. <laughs> final weekend. And we just you just wander around aimlessly at the yep. casino at one in the morning thinking, what the... Well, it's impressive the way they do it. They pump lavender through the air vents. They just have no <laughs> clocks there. The lights are always <laughs> blinking. And next minute, you, you walk in at 11.30. Next minute, it's 5 a.m. And you're thinking, where the hell has that time Where's that gone? time gone? And you get outside and you think, uh, and you're a bit, you know, you're a bit hung over. Yeah. And in Melbourne on Saturday, it was like 27 degrees. So you get stinking hot, and so, bright eyes. You try yeah. and get the, oh, the sweat goodness. glands calm yeah. down. You go on, and of course, you go and join another group of mates. And the first thing you've got to do is have a beer because yeah, that's you know, have a shelter to make sure that you're not mm-hmm. look like a soft yep. individual. Anyway, um, they're the two questions. So we can't do much more than that. Uh, We'll take a little, little sting to give us a think about who we got as our shelter, XPA, X Factor Player of the Weekend. Oh, I think it's pretty obvious, given what God. happened at the MCG, and he's from Northam, no? Yep. Couldn't be anyone else, I don't the, think. The Bobby Hill? Yeah. I mean, that's 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 it how... It had to be. Bobby Hill or uh, or Nathan Cleary, take the pick. Yeah, well, we're not going to give it to Nathan, who's nah, in Penrith. Bob, Bobby was phenomenal. Yeah, he was phenomenal. He's from Northam. He's yeah, a good, WA good, boy. Good pick. Good on yeah. him. Well played him, by the way. Just in a nutshell, uh, he has had cancer, I think 12 months ago, testicular cancer. Yep. Um, wanted to go to Essendon yep. as part of a trade going back a bit. <laughs> yeah. That didn't transform. Thank goodness. <laughs> Just let's talk about a slot into a moment. Yeah, my goodness. And then, uh, of course, left the Giants. Um, he's from Northam, as I said, and his cousins, Stephen and uh, Brad. Yep. I think Brad was in the rooms after the yep. game. So Bobby Hill, deservedly a shelter XPA yeah. X Factor. It's just, you couldn't go anywhere. The only other one I think you can argue, and hear me out on this, didn't have this greatest game. To come from the clouds the way Billy Frampton has oh, done yeah. and get a get premiership a medal around your neck. Height, like that's a story. How, did he, how many games did he play this year? Not many. Not many. He's come from the clouds and he's walking off the MCG <laughs> with a premiership medal. Bobby Hill was way better, but I'll tell you what, he, <laughs> Billy Frampton's my X Factor player of the round. Billy, Billy, <laughs> Billy. Uh, now, well, just one quick one before we uh, yes. wrap it up. I'd like to get your opinion. You talk about Billy getting a medal. Yep. Do you have any sympathy or not sympathy? Do you have uh, a theory that? They should, as in a Taylor Adams or a Dan McStay, for instance, who played the bulk of the year, deserve a medal at the end of the grand final. No, they don't. They, uh, it's a really brutal way to go, and it's they were in tears after the game, and they were you know inconsolable. And John Noble was the same. But mm. that's the way it goes. You, you don't play in the grand final. You don't. You're not a premiership player, and it's as, as much as the clubs will try and say that it's a team effort and everyone gets there. You, you'll all know that. Who played and who didn't, and um, you know it's that's what's got to drive and keep the, the fire alive to go again. But um, no, I don't think there should be um, sympathy awards handed out for guys who play most of the year and miss. It's it's an unfortunate reality of the game. And I remember at Grand Final day in 2018, Eric McKenzie was there, mm. and he was it was the similar thing. And he was. Well, where do you stop? I mean, to be on the, go back to 18. I mean, obviously Brad <coughs> Shepherd would deserve one. Nick Natan, he played that year. I mean, how many yep. medals do you give? Yep. Is it 35? Yeah, there? that's the, there's, there's 40 odd on the list or something. I that's why it, 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 you can't it's got to be you play in the game you win a medal other, yeah. other than that it's stiff 100% uh, big show lots to recap thanks to uh, our friends at Shelter Footy Cast you can email us at footycast at shelterbrewing.com.au at Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram <clears throat> and after a big weekend in Melbourne the voice just <laughs> starting to wander a bit hammer. Go. socials at Shelter Footy Cast on Instagram uh, the YouTube search the back chat or Shelter Footy Cast place Nice work to the Sandover medalist, Skeet, uh, saying to Scoey and the family in Melbourne, uh, have one for Jace today, boys and girls, and uh, our thoughts are with you. See you back here Thursday.